Hello again, everybody. We're going to talk here about secondary hypertension. Now, if you haven't watched my video yet on primary or essential hypertension, I would strongly recommend that you go back and do that because this is going to sort of presuppose that you have uh, that knowledge. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button in the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions that I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And definitely subscribe to my channel and you'll get updates and notifications every time I put a new video up. All right, so secondary hypertension is hypertension with a cause. And that is different from primary hypertension, which is idiopathic hypertension. Now, the vast, vast, vast majority of patients who have hypertension have primary hypertension. Uh, but a small minority have secondary hypertension. And in that case, hypertension is often a symptom rather than a diagnosis. So many of these patients will have other symptoms hypertension just being one. And it's really important that you hone in on those symptoms and work the patient up accordingly. Um, so I have a table at the end of this um, that's going to show you some of the things to look out for in some of the more common causes of secondary hypertension. Really, really, really suspect secondary hypertension when you're dealing with a very young patient or a very old patient who has never had a, a diagnosis of hypertension. Hypertension, primary hypertension, is usually diagnosed in people between the ages of 30 and 65. If you pass 65 and you never had primary hypertension, it's unlikely that you're going to develop it. And we rarely, rarely see uh, essential hypertension in young adults. Um, Usually when we do, it's uh, a patient who's a smoker and obese and type 2 diabetes, and you get the idea. The causes of secondary hypertension can be remembered by all of these Cs. Now, these are not all of the causes. There are so many causes of secondary hypertension, I can't possibly go into all of them. Uh, but these are the more common ones uh, that you uh, will see on exams. All right, so how do we distinguish these? Well, a pheochromocytoma, which you probably remember from step one, it's not super common in practice, but it's very common on exams. What you want to look for here are intermittent episodes of hypertension. Now, hypertension is not really a symptom. It's a uh, finding. It's a sign. Um, so um, what you want to look for here are things that relate to uh, excess sympathetic activity. So sweating, palpitations, chest pain, visual changes. But these will be intermittent episodes. So they have them, they last minutes, and then they go away. That is very characteristic of pheochromocytoma. So look for that. Polycystic kidney disease runs in families. These patients usually have a flank mass. They may have gross hematuria, but often it's microscopic. Again, look for that family history. Um, it, it may be renal failure, uh, or it may be a subarachnoid hemorrhage uh, in the family. Remember that the one we run into in adults is autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. And so many of these patients will have a parent who has the same disease. Cushing syndrome, look for hypokalemia because of the increased mineralocorticoid activity. Remember, cortisol does have some mineralocorticoid activity, um, so we would see hypokalemia, but we would also see some of these other symptoms, uh, weight gain, abdominal stride, buffalo hump, and then some of these virilizing changes like hirsutism, and uh, women can have menstrual changes. Kahn syndrome is very similar. However, this is high aldosterone, so we don't see some of those other symptoms that we see in Cushing's. What we would see here is hypertension and hypokalemia. Renal artery stenosis, the giveaway here is that they'll tell you there's an abdominal brewery. This is usually due to fibromuscular dysplasia. It is uh, more commonly seen in women. Um, so if you have a young woman coming in with hypertension, uh, consider renal artery stenosis and get a uh, renal uh, ultrasound or, you know, just visualize the renal arteries at least. Contraceptives, pretty easy, just the history. We're talking here oral contraceptives uh, here. They do raise your risk of hypertension. 
congenital adrenal hyperplasia. We're talking here not about the 21 hydroxylase deficiency. That will cause hypotension. We're talking about the other two, and I will briefly uh, refer to those in a little bit. Uh, so these are usually young patients. There's often a family history. They usually have a hypokalemia because of increased cortisol and or aldosterone activity, and they may have virilization, and that uh, would be due to increased sex hormones. Coarctation of the aorta, uh, what you see here is a blood pressure differential. Uh, make sure that if you have a young patient with hypertension that you are measuring the blood pressure both on the right and on the left and also on the limbs. Um, that will really, really help. Uh, radiofemoral delay, just because, you know, you have the aorta here, you got these branches, and if you have uh, a, uh, a blockage here, or a, a coarctation here, um, what you'll have is decreased blood pressure in the lower extremities and relatively increased blood pressure, particularly on the right upper extremity. Uh, and that's because the blockage is right here. Right? And this is brachiocephalic, uh, left common carotid, and uh, left subclavian. Uh, nephrotic syndrome, pretty fairly straightforward symptoms here. Edema, foamy urine. Um, look for this in a child, especially uh, minimal change disease, for instance. Hyperthyroidism, again, very classic symptoms. Look for weight loss. A thin patient with hypertension, especially a young woman, probably Graves' disease, heat intolerance, menstrual changes, and so forth. So here are your variety of causes of secondary hypertension. Uh, like I promised you, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. We're talking about the two less common causes, 11 beta and 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency. It is very unlikely that you're going to be tested on this on step two or three, but on step one, look out. Uh, so we talked about pheo, we talked about polycystic kidney disease, Cushing, Con, renal artery stenosis, contraceptives, and coarctation. I have specific videos for all of these. So they may be in my nephrology section, they may be in my endocrinology section. You can go back and watch those if you want. Now, if you're dealing with a pregnant patient, there are a number of things that you need to consider. If a, you have a woman who's uh, in pregnancy and you get a hypertensive result, um, what you need to consider is uh, these various hypertensive disorders of pregnancy, and I put them here. So there's preeclampsia, which can be uh, just regular old preeclampsia or severe. Uh, and the diagnostic criteria here is that you have a blood pressure of over 140 over 90, and you need to have at least two readings and a two plus dipstick urine protein, which is usually how it's done, or 300 milligrams of protein on a 24 hour uh, urine sample. Now, it used to be that edema was a diagnostic criteria that you had to fulfill, not anymore. Now, I have a whole video on preeclampsia. You can go back and watch that. It is newly updated, um, so you should have uh, updated um, criteria on there. Eclampsia is preeclampsia with seizures. HELP syndrome is a variant of preeclampsia. It's really nice. The syndrome has a mnemonic for you, um, and that's hemolysis, elevated liver enzymes, and low platelets. So if you've got a patient who's been diagnosed with preeclampsia, uh, make sure and get a liver panel and a CBC, because that's going to tell you if she has HELP syndrome, the management will differ. Gestational hypertension is just regular old elevated blood pressure, no proteinuria, no seizures, no elevated liver enzymes, it's just hypertension. Now that's gotta be after 20 weeks. If it's before 20 weeks, then the diagnosis is an essential hypertension, just like any non-pregnant person. All right, so to recap, primary hypertension is an idiopathic hypertension. Uh, everyone with hypertension should make lifestyle adjustments. That's usually diet and exercise. If they have stage one hypertension, you'll treat with hypertensives if they're at high risk. Remember, we use the ASCVD. Do not worry about that for your exam. Patients with stage two hypertension usually will get two agents. First line 
drug therapy can be a thiazide ACE inhibitor, angiotensin receptor blocker, or calcium channel blocker, but the drug of choice is influenced by comorbidities. If they don't have any of these things, go with a thiazide. Uh, if they've got diabetes, especially if there's proteinuria, go with an ACE inhibitor. Uh, if they've got cardiovascular disease, go with a beta blocker. If they're black, go for a calcium channel blocker or a thiazide, um, unless they have one of these two. Uh, hypertensive emergency is hypertens hypertension with signs or symptoms of end organ damage. The treatment of choice is usually IV nitroprusside. Uh, do not lower the blood pressure by more than 25% in the first two hours. Secondary hypertension, which we talked about in this video, has many, many causes. So you should know the associated clinical symptoms and the labs.